Hello, hello, everybody. It's 8.58 p.m. Central Time on the 5th of July, 2023. Hope you're doing well. It's Wednesday night here in the United States. If you celebrated 4th of July in the United States, hope you had a good one and a safe one. We're not here to talk about holidays, though. We're here to talk about seismic events. And if you don't know what you're looking at, we're using Earthquake 3D, the program. I don't get anything for recommending it. Let me just turn on a display capture so you can see what I see. And it comes with a bunch of stock feeds in here. Here's what we've got selected if you want to see. And that's who we're using just to show us a good spread of activity across the planet over the last 48 hours. And we have a little bit of activity to talk about down in Australia, across the West Pacific, on the West Coast of the United States, and on the East Coast, connecting in between as well. And we'll get right into it. So in the West Pacific, here we go, a bunch of deep earthquakes. And those are raised high off the planet, so you can see them easily. And just really quick, if you're new here, we have letter Ds, which are on the map here, here at Indonesia, here at Japan, up here at Kamchatka, one over here at the Mideast, and one all the way down here in South America. The letter Ds are where we watch for new deep earthquakes to take place. And you can see the deep earthquakes raised high off the planet. So you can see, for instance, a bunch of new deep earthquakes occurred right in the middle of our letter D. That's a forecast area point where we watch for new deep earthquakes to take place. And like I said, we only have a few of them around the planet. And we go up here to the north and right here in the middle of this letter D. Here's our other set of deep earthquakes. We go further to the north and just south of our letter D up at the Sea of Oktusk. 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 West of Kamchatka, Russia. Okay, west, southwest. Here's the Kuril Islands and deep 4.5 there. So deep fours, deep fives going from here at Fiji and Tonga all the way up here to Russia. And that means something's going on down below the plates. And let me just open a USGS reported quake here, and we'll just open their plate boundary map. This is, again, this is the reason I show this. This is accepted across the world. It's not uh, up for debate or dispute. That's why I show it. And here it is, the red line map, defining the boundaries between plates as currently known. And you'll see the Indo-Australian plate right here. Okay, the Indo-Australian plate down below it at Fiji, going up to Japan, down below to the north. And then further, all the way up here at the Sea of Oktusk. So all the way along here, down below, something's going on. And when something goes on down below, guess what happens? Up above, within a few days, we see a responding event. Something bigger than what is going on down below. And I think the reason for that is it's coming up out of the fluid of the magma deep down below and going into the more rigid underside of the plate and up through the plate. It's like a, like a wave crashing against a rocky shore that there's a lot of energy in a wave when it's going through the water and passing through an area unobstructed. That energy is there, but it's realized when it crashes into something. Okay? And I think that's what's happening down below. Certainly up above it, look what's happened. A spread of mid to upper fives going out in all directions, and that's on top of our near seven that struck just a few days ago at 6.9 took place just a couple days ago, going out in all directions from there now, going down to the south towards New Zealand, over to the west, all the way over to Solomon Islands right here, and New Zealand's down here. You see it. It's a, I mean, well, you maybe don't because there's so many rings on the screen here. We go down to the south and over to the west. This is what's happened since the big earthquake. Going back to the USGS map here, we went down to New Zealand, heading down towards New Zealand, and about the same distance to the west, We've reached out this far in both directions in the last day and a half. Now, I have a warning going in New Zealand for Wellington to be on watch for 5.0 level activity. It's enough to knock things off shelves. It's enough to get your attention. And Wellington is right here in between both sets of, well, three sets of rings somewhat overlap there. And let me show you what's really there on the USGS map. That red line again. The Indo-Australian plate boundary is something's coming up down below it going up towards, all the way towards Russia, and down across back to Fiji. Now, the red earthquake on here just struck in the past couple hours, or less, actually, in the last hour, reported by the USGS. 5.2 heading all the way over towards Mar Marit 
Myra Tias? Oh, okay, but good luck, right? Okay. I'm pronouncing that. Okay. I'm going to go across and I'll talk about the other earthquakes which struck. So, going to the west since my last update, this is what's happened. A five, of course, right on the plate boundary. One more time, we go to that USGS map. Or more than one more time, we're going to keep going back to it. Here on the north or the west side, what would you call that? The north side and the west side? Northwest side? North side? Now, going across all the way towards Madagascar, we have another similar sized earthquake. This one's a 5.1, this one's a 5.2. Now, I have a warning going down here at the letter X. I issued actually a watch and not a warning, but told everybody to keep watch. I said I didn't know if I had many viewers down here. Well, I was surprised to get a lot of responses from people who live in the northern part of South Africa and a few other countries all the way up north, up here in North Africa, Tunisia and so forth, wrote me and said they have relatives down here. Anyway, check it out. Mayo Island just got hit. Now, a quick story on this. I won't take too much time on it. Right here, a series of earthquakes struck several years ago. I started to document the earthquakes because it's a rare location to get hit. Normally, we go over to the X or somewhere around the X. So when we start moving here, I started to pay attention. I zoomed in real close and there was this little speck of a dot here on the map. I went over to Google Earth. And this is again many years ago, so like six or seven years ago. And I started making videos and I, I, actually it was when I started my live stream. And I zoomed in on the spot, and I saw the name on it, and it was called Mayotte Island. Mayotte, Mayette, Mayotte. And up here, I'm sorry, up here. Here's Mayotte Island. And I clicked on it. I couldn't believe it. It was an ancient volcano, thousands of years old. Now, why couldn't I believe it? Well, all the earthquakes that struck there, and I started to report on it, and people said it meant nothing. It was just chance. He said, I was trying to scare the people on the island, and the French authorities got involved. We'll get into the French in a little bit, too, because they came back stepping. But anyway, series of earthquakes struck on the east side of the island. I started making videos on it. They called me a, a fear monger and everything. Then, within a few months of the earthquake starting there, it erupted. After 3,000 years of being quiet, it erupted out in the ocean off to the east side. Then, professionals came out and said that they had been studying it the whole time, and it was emitting strange seismic signals that were picked up around the planet. And you can search the term Mayo seismic signals, and you'll get their stories where they say they were monitoring it the whole time. Same time that I was being blasted publicly, people saying I was trying to scare people for talking about the earthquakes there. So they were monitoring it. Strange seismic signals going off on me while it was actually happening, and then it erupted. Okay, anyway, well, why am I telling you that? A series of earthquakes just struck next to there again. This is on the south side of Mayo. Mayo's here, and we're on the south side of Mayo. Well, what's on the south side of Mayo down here? Take a look at it. Under Sea Mount Chain, the Mozambique Channel. But the Mozambique Channel is just nothing more but a bunch of undersea mounts that are not well mapped go back up to the north, and they take the same path and trajectory out there in the ocean that the ones out in here on land do. Maybe I need to turn off the borders and labels for you to even see this. That volcano after volcano goes in a line northwest to southeast out on land and out in the ocean. Anyway, we have a seismic flow that's coming across. Pretty obvious, right? You could trace the number of earthquakes across and back over to where it came from, which is... It came across the Indo-Australian plate. The wave that I'm talking about here came up from down below, traveled across, and has now gone across over to here all the way towards Africa. And the next stop is, well, here, I'll zoom in and show you. Malawi, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Zambia, where the X is. Well, they don't have an X there. Where the X is. Okay. Now, same time that that sized activity... 5.1, 5.2, and a 4.8 going across the south side or the west side of the Indo-Australian plate. One more time, Indo-Australia, west side, south side. It's also going up and around through China and over to the west, over into Iran. But we have to go back a day to see it. This happened yesterday. And, well, technically over the last two days. Over the last 48 hours, the north side of the Indo-Australian plate moved. And look at the magnitudes. 
4.9, 4.6. Well, I'd say a 4.9 is about the same size as a 4.8 on the other side, wouldn't you? And you got a 5.1 and a 5.2 on the south and the west side. Well, if you add the 5.1 and 5.2 together, guess what it equals? 5.3 to 5.4. And that's what struck on the far northwest side on the next plate over. Next plate over here towards Iran. This is all in the last 48 hours. So, what's going on? Same-sized earthquakes going across all sides of the Indo-Australian plate, spreading out all the way to the west over towards Iran and to the adjacent plate. The wave is spreading now. The wave we were looking for to spread is spreading. And it's dropping off the same-sized earthquakes all the way along the way. Around the outside edges, following those red lines, like a river. This is one of my biggest discoveries. That there's a flow like a river. Drops off earthquakes along the way. It's just the force that causes earthquakes. It's a big discovery that there's a separate force that passes through areas and drops off earthquakes equally spaced somewhat. A wave spreading through an area that then precipitates the earthquakes. Now, there's something else going on. X-class flares. Spooky, spooky, spooky. Solar storm. Northern lights. Oh, no. Radio blackout. Oh, no. All right, okay. Look. Solar storms always cause radio blackouts. The more powerful they are, the more radio interference is. The charged particles going across the atmosphere of the Earth, guys. We've seen way bigger. Earth-directed. CMEs and solar flares happen in the past. Directly impact Earth. And what happens? Usually an increase in earthquake activity. Also strong storms. Meteorological effect within days. Uh, how does that happen? Charged particles come from the sun. Either it's a strong solar wind, a coronal hole, Earth-directed CME actually ejecting particles towards the Earth. <clears throat> when that hits Earth, the charged particles are basically scuffing their feet across the carpet of the atmosphere. And you guys know what happens when you scuff your feet across the carpet in certain conditions on the ground. You could build up a charge in your body, like a battery or a capacitor, and then you go touch something and out comes a lightning bolt, right? You picked up some free electrons and storm in your body and scuff your feet, right? Well, the radio waves, well, the charged particles from the sun, basically radio waves, scuffing their feet across the carpet of the atmosphere. And that builds up into a charge that starts to glow in the atmosphere. It's called the northern lights. It's a huge amount of electricity. And as we're all taught, electricity actually goes to ground, right? Our electrical that we use in the walls and it goes to ground. You've got your ground. Well, ground is ultimately the core of the Earth. And when the sun bombards the Earth with a huge amount of charged particles and the air glows up at the north and south and down at the south pole, the northern and southern lights, that electrical air glow eventually translates into actual DC power that goes down into the ground, to the core of the Earth. When that power goes down to the core of the Earth, the core of the Earth is a plasma torch. It's not a solid ball of metal like they told you in grade school. It turns out they were wrong, yeah. Well, it turns out they're always wrong on everything, and they always adjust everything. But anyway, the core of the Earth is not a solid ball of metal. It's either a mixture of or fully plasma, like a plasma torch in a factory that you would use to cut through any substance. But way more powerful and way bigger. That plasma torch at the center of the Earth gets its power like plugging into a wall, but it's plugging in to the charged particles from the sun. So when that plasma torch heats up down at the core of the Earth, guess what else happens? A rise in frequency, a rise in vibration. It starts to vibrate like a bass drum. And that sends out very low frequency waves and lower, even ultra low frequency and beyond. Comes back up and hits the plates like a vibrating speaker. And that's where we get our deep quakes coming out from down below. So let me just quickly sum it up. Solar storm hits Earth, charged particles go down to the ground, down to the core of the Earth, vibrates back up, base speaker within a few days, hits the bottom of the plate, we get a bunch of deep earthquakes. A bunch of deep earthquakes happen, big earthquakes follow that. So, solar storms cause big earthquakes. The whole time it takes is about six days, six or seven days. It takes about three days for the charged particles to reach Earth. Another day or two of the air glowing, actually, the northern and southern lights glowing. Then that charge goes down to ground, another day. It comes back up, another day. Within six days, within a week, 
we see the deep earthquakes start to hammer off all over the planet after a big solar storm buffets Earth. Whether it's from solar wind or charged particles from a CME or Earth-directed solar flare or sometimes it's all of those above, the more the, the stronger that hits, the bigger the effect that responds. And that's just with the earthquakes coming back up. I haven't even touched on the weather. That's for other people to talk about. You can go check out Suspicious Observers, who, I, you know, I don't know if the guy likes me or not now, or not, whatever. But he's got great coverage on this, on the solar earthquake effect, especially the coronal holes. He's specifically focused on that, and it's very correct. And it has to do with the Earth being electrical in nature. The whole universe is. Okay. Now, let's talk about Europe. All the way over here. Got a warning going. Got a warning going right down here. Crete going over to Rhodes has not hit yet. We're expecting 5 to 5, 5.5 to 5.9. So far, 4 struck down in South Sicily. Or West. Wait, where is that? East Sicily. But in between the two, if we go around the bend of the plate following this red arrow, or if we go over to the USGS map, go around the bend of the plate following this W shape in the plate. Again, we got earthquakes over here. We got earthquakes over here. Halfway point between the two. That's where we have the warning going that I issued yesterday. So we're expecting, well, two days ago, we're expecting a 5.5 to 5.9 here next to Rhodes. We have a deep earthquake down below the Tyrrhenian Sea, but it's a deep three. This four has struck after that, so technically we have a shallower, larger earthquake. But I think this is related to the volcanoes there. Several volcanoes there. Oh, um, oh, hold on one second, guys. Got a little sneeze coming. Woo! Woo! Wow, that cleaned you out. Now check it out. If you were paying attention to areas where we issued warnings, a new swarm broken out right at the south tip of Iceland. Now, technically, I warned the Rake Jane's Ridge out here, but I talked about south of Iceland and south of the X. And here we are. We are south of the X, right on the tip, but there's something else going on there. Let's go pull coordinates from one of these quakes. That Geophone Potsdam should suffice. Wait, can I even grab the coordinates? There's something at the location. Something we talked about the other day. Something that the professionals even mentioned just the other day. I'll show it to you in a second. The suspense, right? There we go. So, Krishuvik Trollanding. There's Rake Janes, by the way. So, we're talking about watching Rake Janes. Instead, we've got this. Let's try it again. Krusevik. Come on, guys. Say it with me. There it is. Big on the screen. Follow along with your teacher. Kreshuvik Trolladnin. Now, it's where the trolls live. Now we found where all the YouTube trolls live. That nine-year-old army is stationed here. I heard there was something else going on all the way over here at a place called Catla. It was in the news just this past week. The professionals are watching Catla for the potential of a eruption because of hundreds of tremors that are going around there. They're not saying it's going to erupt, but they said they're watching it. And that was in the news just over the past few days. Now we're all over, all the way over here, right next to Rick James. And I'm just going to say it, that's the earthquake we're looking for. That's the swarm we're, again, checking out this location for. We're watching it for it, and then it takes place. So there it is. Check it off the list. Where did it come from? We can trace it back across Europe. The only thing missing now is the halfway point between here at the tail end and back down here where it's coming from. We should see a new earthquake break. That should be North Europe. Germany? Germany. Achtung! Achtung! Sorry, it's not a, it's, I'm not a trying to impersonate you. I'm saying it in the proper tone because it's supposed to be important. That means a new mid-range to upper four is coming into Germany that I have to issue a warning for now. It's called an Erdbeben. Erdbeben? I'm trying to learn how to say earthquake in every language. 
Erdbeben. Erdbeben? Okay, whatever. Okay, I'm trying. All right, guys, I'm not mocking you. I'm seriously trying to learn how to say earthquake in proper tense. Okay. So we watched North Germany right at the Eiffel Volcanic Field, which is an actual volcanic field. They've talked about this location before many times in the past, actually. If you are paying attention to this spot, they drove a bunch of trucks through here looking for natural gas deposits. It was just a few years ago at the East Eiffel and West Eiffel Volcanic Field. So that's where I'd watch for a mid-range to upper four. It should be pretty rare for Germany to get it, but... Come on, if you take all these fours and add them together. And back behind it, we got fives. I'm looking for an upper five to near six to strike at Rhodes, North Europe. It could go as far north as the English Channel, but I would think it would strike on mainland Europe. Okay, that's a new addition to my forecast. Down here to the south, Aziz, guys, Perth got it. Down in the southwest. And there's a line of earthquakes that goes across the area. Check it out. It goes from the center part of the plate down to the southwest, down to the southeast. This fulfills the forecast for all of Australia. It started with the movement up in the northwest, up here by the arrow. Followed by your rare 4.6 to 4.8 earthquake down here at, well, I, next to Melbourne. I keep saying it's at Melbourne. It's about 100 miles east of Melbourne. Then we told you to watch for the center of the plate to move and for Perth to move. So, center of the plate moved, and now Perth is moved. The next spot to watch, the last spot to watch, is an ancillary spot up in the northwest, all the way in the far northwest, up by Exmouth, Exmouth, the VLF array. Let's talk about Hawaii for a second before we go any further. I forgot to mention Hawaii in my past two updates. I saw Doing Hawaii was in my YouTube chat, and I... Gave them a shout out and everything. Everybody should go over and check out Two Pineapples and Doing Hawaii. They do great coverage out of Hawaii. I'll put links down below to their channels. They have YouTube channels where they run live streams of the Kilauea eruption, which seems to be, well, not just seems to be, is going in surges. The surges are coming from somewhere. The surges can be seen coming in ahead of time. If you live in Hawaii, this is a new discovery that I've made in the past few years, I want to say probably the last four to five years, Kilauea surges after you see surges up here, seismically speaking, and volcanically. So if you see Ebico, if you see Kamchatka, if you see the Aleutian Island chain, volcanically speaking, going, or if you see big seismic up here, you watch for the flow, the wave I've been talking about this whole update, the VLF wave, to travel down, and over and into Hawaii. And for first, your seismic to pick up. You'll see the number of earthquakes increase, and you'll see the magnitudes go up. It's like a frequency increase. It's like a drummer hitting their drum faster and harder. So you'll see that happen first, then you watch. When you see the frequency increase, when you see the number of earthquakes go up around the whole island, and it usually looks something like this, where the whole island, all the way around it, will see a bunch of small earthquakes going up into the near 3.0 range, just like this. So right now I'm looking at the last two days worth of quakes, almost three days, and you'll see there's a three up on the north side, there's a two on the west side, there's a swarm down on the south side, down by Pahala like normal, and then over to the east, over next to Pu'u'o'o in the old lava flow and the new lava flow, and then back up here at the big ones, back at Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. It's like a big ring around Hawaii. So why is that happening? If you go look up all the locations, you can. You, again, I mean, we shouldn't need to look up Mauna Kea or Mauna Loa or Pu'u'u'u'u or Kilauea. All those should be well known by everybody. Over on the west side, you're Captain Cook, one lone quake. But the rest of it, it's obvious. It's a ring of earthquakes around Hawaii. Where's it coming from? The wave. The wave is bouncing down into Hawaii now. But you still have a little bit to go here, I would say, in the next three to five days. So let's just say by the 9th, by Sunday, I would expect this to be filled in with new quakes, pretty significant, up here, that are going up into the nearer 6.0 range. Again, it should be across 5.9-ish. And then I would expect the seismic increase to go back in down here, the magnitudes to go up. And I would expect this to go up into the 4 range if you're already at 3s and you're going to get hit with a new wave coming in. It's already there. I mean, the wave is already impacting now. 
So back behind it, up all the way in the northwest Pacific, you'll see a few earthquakes pop up there that are in the upper 5 range. And then you should see something going to near 5.0 range back here in Hawaii. And then watch at Doing Hawaii and go watch over it. Two pineapples and you'll see the surge come back up right after that. It's like clockwork, usually. Not going to say it happens every time because Mother Nature can always do some strange stuff like the wobble. Now, before I get into the United States, let's talk about Central America and South America. Oh, the wobble. You don't know what happened? You don't know about the wobble? Well, they've now tried to explain it away as us pumping out too much groundwater. But guess what just happened? The wobble just happened again a day ago. Caught on radar. It's an electromagnetic wobble that's happening being caught on one radar system algorithm showing it national weather service is filtering it out not showing the general public showing up on some weather systems as a wobbling undulating radar signature across whole continents where all the radar stations at once are being forced electromagnetically to wobble somehow and that's coming up out of the core of the earth the earth is wobbling and guess where it just wobbled two days ago up here. I can't show it to you because it's off the weather feed. Conveniently. You just have to take my word for it. It happened. I actually recorded a video on it, which is in my saved videos, which I will actually open for you to see so you can see the wobble. Even though I technically don't have it on radar anymore. Here we go. I'm going to turn off my sound on this. And I'm going to blow this up full screen so you can see it. This is me showing everybody the wobble yesterday. Here's our timestamps. They should be on here somewhere. Timestamps should hopefully be on here. There we go. See that? It's like a waterbed. These are all the radar stations wobbling at once due to something else. The wobble. And the wobble is up in the northeast, which is a change because previously it was down in the southwest. And it emanated out from there. By the time it got to the northeast, the wobbling was, again, like a ripple in a lake, very faint out over on the edge. Now it's on the east coast, and look, it wobbles over to the west, and it dissipates by the time it gets out over to Canada. It's not happening over in Europe, and it's not happening up in Canada. This is me talking about it last night in my video last night. I zoom in on it and show it more. wait for it to load here hold on oh and by the way my internet crashed several times while i was trying to record this here's the national weather service feed and showing that the national weather service feed is not showing that getting back over and showing it one more time here there's the wobble centered around southeast canada up at maine all right, that happened a day and a half ago. It's not up for debate. And oh, and by the way, you can't tell me it's a radar error with my local news station. I went around to multiple news stations and looked at their radars too, the ones that are using the same algorithm. So it matters. It really matters what I just showed you there because the wobble that just happened was followed up with two somewhat noteworthy earthquakes, mid-range twos, two earthquakes right there, right at the same time within a day of that wobble showing up. Now, that's only on radar. If you were looking at storms with your eyes, you're not going to see storms move back and forth by miles like that. That's electromagnetic in nature. Now, my local meteorologist got on in and explained that, the wobble. They said it was due to atmospheric layering. It was not an error. That's, quote, the NBC meteorologist here in St. Louis talking about the wobble. The last time it happened down in the southwest in southwest United States over Arizona. Well, now the wobble's in the northeast. The wobble has moved. Something that can shift 50 or more different radar stations that are 750,000 watts each. But just do it electromagnetically. A wave. A wobble. So if the wobble is happening and it's passed up to the northeast, that's odd. I don't have any other previous examples to show you or go on, so I don't know what to expect other than to tell you the last time it happened, it was followed by major fires down to the south and up to the north. Insane fires down in Mexico, 
and that are still ongoing up in the Northwest in Canada. I'm just telling you it was followed by that. I'm not saying it was caused by that or that that caused it, the fires. I'm just saying they happened around the same time. First the wobble, then the fires. The quakes also accompanying the wobble in the Southwest down in Arizona. When the wobble happened down in Arizona and New Mexico, guess what accompanied it? Pretty rare earthquake activity down in New Mexico and down in Arizona. So we got earthquake activity next to the wobble. We've got a reported actual wobble that they're saying is caused by the removal of groundwater. That the earth is wobbling due to our removal of groundwater. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's the ticket. Now let's go and look in the northwest. Let's start in the Pacific Northwest. Go up in Washington and Oregon and just take a look. Do we have anything new or significant to report to you from my last update? Well, Yellowstone's still going. This is not a big deal. The earthquakes, I mean. The earthquakes at Yellowstone are not a big deal. It's normal to get a line of earthquakes coming in out of Canada and going down into the park. This is on the edge of the North American Craton. 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 There it is. Take a look to get your attention. The edge of the craton. Earthquakes going down across it. It's a big discovery of mine. Pro Egghead professor showed up and denied it. Said I was a conspiracy theorist for saying it was happening. Furthermore, went along to say that I was faking earthquakes somehow to make it look like there was a progression when they realized there actually was. They didn't want to admit they were wrong. So they said that the quakes that I was showing were somehow fake. Okay, well, yeah, that was about nine years ago. Here we are, uh, Craton's still a moving. Why does it matter? It proves that there's a flowing force going across something. And it's not random that we can forecast like a flowing river. And look at the size quakes up here, and they match the size quakes down in Texas. Size quakes down in Texas match the size quakes over here in the Midwest. Size quakes in the Midwest match size quakes up in the Northeast. They're all within a hair of a point of each other. That's not much loss of energy across a whole plate, is it? Guess what? The standing wave that's going across the plate is super powerful. It only loses a little bit of energy as it goes across a whole plate. So it'll go from fours to threes, and from threes to twos across the plate. But it's not that a four is causing a three in Texas, and it's not that a three is causing a two up in Maine. It's that the fours, the threes, and the twos going across the plate are caused by a greater wave that's going across the whole plate, and it's dropping off the earthquakes along the way. So one earthquake is not causing the other. Elasticity and all the equations still stand. Doesn't negate anything, guys. You got it wrong. I'm talking to the professionals. Professionals came over to me and said, One earthquake can't cause the other. A four on the West Coast can't cause a four in the Midwest can't cause a three on the east coast there's such a thing called elasticity dutch inverse square square inverse energy dissipates at a distance i'm like yeah i know i'm not saying an earthquake on the west coast is causing an earthquake in the midwest i'm saying an earthquake on the west coast and the earthquake in the midwest are both being caused by something else bro and it's passing off the earthquakes in a standing wave across the way as it goes it's a vlf wave of some kind that's what i'm saying and i'm showing it look at it Look at the span of earthquakes and the equal spacing of the quakes going across all of Central America. They're all about a hair of a point of a part. All in a day, the whole plate moved along that red line. This is a huge discovery. Everybody denied it. Why? Well, they didn't want to admit they were. They didn't want to admit earthquakes aren't random. They all said it was random. Look, standing wave of earthquakes going across Mexico. USGS doesn't show it. I've got the Mexico feed turned on. USGS literally leaving it all blank. If they showed their viewers... They, you would see a four up off the west coast. If the USGS showed the quakes 3.0 and greater, this is what you would see. <laughs> it's 24 hours worth of earthquakes. Check out the perfect spacing of the threes going all the way down across Mexico. Let's go back to the USGS site. What do they show for the last 24 hours? Oh, uh, well, look, man, ignorance is bliss. It's like the scene from the movie The Matrix when Cypher's eating the steak with the agent and he's like, ignorance is bliss. Put me back in the Matrix. I want to be somebody famous like an actor. Well, now you wouldn't want to be an actor. Now you'd want to be a YouTuber like me, right? 
<laughs> Being an actor is so 21st century. You just got to be yourself, man. It's way better. Okay. All right. Everybody, calm down. <laughs> Don't panic. Okay. Let's go look at the West Coast. You guys ever see Dante's Peak, the movie? Speaking of the West Coast. You got Pierce Brosnan, former James Bond, playing Professor Harry Dalton. He screams into the microphone into a crowded gymnasium. Don't panic. Screaming at the top of his lungs, don't panic. That doesn't work. If you scream, don't panic. Dude, you might as well tell everybody the place is on fire. All right. Let's go up into Washington State. En enough lessons of life. Let's go see what's going on up in Washington. At Bickleton, Washington. What's going on up in Bickleton? What a name. I like it. Let's go look it up. What's up in Bickleton? Ah, Simcoe Butte Volcano. What else is here? Let's zoom in on the earthquake epicenter, see if there's something nearby worth looking at. Wow, we got the very low frequency transportation transmission lines, I mean. Transmitting electricity. I call them transportation lines. It's transporting electricity. Very low frequency across an area. Follow the electrical lines back down to the south, and they actually become very pronounced. I wonder where they're generating the power of this. It's coming from pretty far away. Look at that. Dang where do you think it is? There or there? All right. Anyway, uh, the power lines. This gets into something that I could go on for about an hour on. Very low frequency in the power lines. Very low frequency down in the plate. Or ultra low frequency. Where the two combine, you get an earthquake. Precipitated down below the power lines. Or you could say it's drawn up from down below. The two combine. Where the two waves combine, that's called a scalar where the waves combine. In the scalar, that's where Mother Nature is popping off an earthquake down below the power lines. Happens all over the world this way, including below power plants. So nuclear, coal fire, natural gas, solar, wind. They all get them. Earthquakes down below them, including their transmission lines. It only happens when the very low frequency coming through the plate is significant enough to come up out of the plate or very close to the surface to combine with that. And we go over to the west and the volcanoes are moving. So over here, we're at Mount Rainier. Rainier. Come on, everybody. Say it with me. Mount Rainier. I'm sure people up in Washington appreciate that. Now, check it out. Look at that. It's right on the flank of Mount Rainier. And why are we having earthquakes on the flank, flank of Mount Rainier? For the same reason, we're having earthquakes down around inside of the crater of Mount St. Helens. Not because the volcano is going to erupt. Let's go down and take a look. Amboy, Washington. It doesn't mean eruption, so I want everybody to get that through their head. When you see swarms, of, small swarms like this, a few dozen earthquakes, it's that wave I've been talking about passing through an area that's already fractured, that's already been blown apart. In this case, like I said, we're right on the crater of Mount St. Helens there. So Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, wave coming across, pretty obvious. Go next to the power lines. If I were to go up to the north, we would either have explosions or power lines. This 0 0.6 at just Washington is somewhat suspect. Hold on. Oh, no. Dude, I hate it when this happens. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Damn it. Damage. See the high voltage power lines? Now the high voltage power lines go back to where they're actually generating power. They've got a few hydroelectric generation stations across through here. High voltage power lines and hydroelectric dam there. And another one back up here. High voltage power lines coming out from it. And I said, oh no, because this, these high voltage power lines actually go over next to something else that I really don't want to talk about right now. So we'll just leave that out of here. There's also something down to the east by southeast, but it's 
pretty far away. I'd say it's far enough away. It's not related. And that's the Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Site. But just not, I shouldn't have even mentioned that. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. One lone quake up here to the north. What's going on up there at Con... 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 What's up with the names on this update tonight? It's like I'm getting trolled by fate. Okay, what's there? Well, look at this name of the... The Sin La... Heckin... The Sin La Heckin Deer... I mean, you know, what else would you call it? You know, what else would you call it? Why would you have a different name for it? Like, you know, the Ron Johnson... Reservoir. Now that's really bizarre. There's an Oroville up here right at the border. Are you are you freaking kidding me? What the hell? Dude, okay, man, this is just... People in California are like, what? I'm like, huh? Okay, dude, what? Let's go down. Let's, let's get out of here. Washington, you're freaking me out, man. Let's go down in Oregon. The, where it's a little less... It's a little less freaky. Okay, is it? Is it, though? Is Oregon less freaky than Washington? No, Washington has a higher hippie population. Washington has a higher hippie population. Oregon has a higher uh, anarchist population. So I don't know which will be worse. One will certainly smell worse than the other, I guess. I think anarchists still use deodorant. I don't know. They might have both given up on it because of the mind control aspects of the aluminum. I don't know. <sighs> You're learning all kinds of stuff in this update. Here's the earthquake epicenter. It is smack in the middle of several volcanoes called the Three Sisters. The Three Sisters, the North and South Trending Three Sisters volcanic group dominates the landscape of Central Oregon Cascades. All three sister stratovolcanoes ceased activity during the late Pleistocene, but basaltic to rhyolitic flank vents erupted during the Holocene. In other words, it erupted a really long time ago, and it's actually erupted in the modern era at some time, and that's those fresher lava flows that have zero trees on them. Don't you wish they would just say stuff like it should be? Uh, you gotta, they gotta justify a paycheck. You go to college to learn how to talk smart Dutch. Okay, let's go down to the south. Northern California. What's going on up here in Northern Cali? 2.7. Soames Bar, California. Out here in the woods in Northern California in the summertime, are we? In July, no less. Uh-oh. Nothing go wrong there. Nothing go wrong in the woods of Northern California in the July. Is there anything else here nearby that we need to see? This place called Orleans, Klamath National Forest. Anything else? Hoopa. Another weird name that I wouldn't even want to try to pronounce. Sam Forks of Salmon? I'm looking for anything, and I mean anything that would stand out as odd, other than the volcano right next to this thing. So the big volcano, Mount Shasta, right next to it, let's get a measurement and see how far that is. I, it's actually fairly far. Mileage to Mount Shasta is 65 miles. I don't know if you can see that. 65 miles away. Now, I normally look 40 miles but with a stratovolcano this size, it's connected all the way to the coast. The, the underground magma chamber, the feeder, the feeder for Mount Shasta, ultimately, I think, is going to be coming from the plate boundary, which is out here. That it will get a feeder that comes up at an angle, the subduction zone, whatever you want to call it. Comes up below Black Butte. You've got other volcanoes that connect across, go over to the volcanic center. Okay, we're connected between the two. That, to me, it says that's what's there. 
Now, there are a few other things up here in Northern California, right by here. But, you know, again, we're far enough away that, and, I, and I'm not seeing anything weird out here in the woods. No giant, you know, statues or megalithic structures or greenhouses with 99 plants or anything. We're not seeing anything like that in this update. Now, we have seen those in the past. That's why I'm mentioning them. Let's go down to the east by southeast and get out of this weird spot in Northern California, shall we? What's up here in the north part of the valley? Well, oh wait, this earthquake is a day and a half old, so I shouldn't need to talk about it too much. I talked about it in my last update. We are east, or I'm sorry, we are west of Silver Butte and Latour Butte. Let's take a look at what's hit since my last update. There we go. A 3.5 struck. Significant earthquake. 3.5. It's almost near 4.0. Let's put the coordinates in and go see what's there. This is Northern California. This is today. Last night, a 4.0 struck off the coast. All right. 3.5, Lake Almanor. Lake Almanor, side of Mount Lassen Volcanic Center. Keeps going over and over again. Starts going when that wave is going through the volcanic center. Seeks out the weak point. Weak points in the basin. The basin's the folded area next to the volcanic field. We get basins next to volcanic fields and giant calderas, like Pyramid Lake and Lake Tahoe. Two folded basins on either side of the giant oval caldera that all the professionals missed. Seriously. Super volcano there at the California-Nevada border. All the professionals missed it. I defined it with earthquakes going around this thing. How do I know it's a super volcano? Well, it's bigger than the known supervolcano here. This is Long Valley Caldera. And it's bigger than Yellowstone, which is right here. Yellowstone's right through here. It's bigger than Toba Supervolcano, which is right here. 60 miles long, 30 miles wide. 60 by 30 there. Just remember that for Toba Super Volcano. I'm going to come back over here. And we'll measure it. There we go. Oh, wait. You can't see the measurement again. 40 by 20. Okay, it's not bigger than... Slight exaggeration. All right, come on. I'm the discoverer of the damn thing. I can say what I want. All right. Officially for me, 40 by 20. It's a super volcano. It's bigger than the known super volcano down here that is 20 by 15 miles. So Long Valley Caldera down here to the south, 20 by 15. This one's bigger than that, but smaller than Toba Super Volcano. All right. It's huge. It's ancient. It's got two folded basins on either side. It's lined with volcanoes. Gets hit with earthquakes around the outside edge. Gets hit with fires around the outside edge. Now, everybody put on your fire suits here. Oh, wait. My internet just died for a second. We need to go over and check the fires. We got ourselves a pretty serious situation. Multiple fires have broken out in the southwest United States. And I pay attention to the fires because fires tend to coincide with earthquake activity, as I've told you many times in the past. So looking at a regional view here, here's Arizona and Southern California. Look at all this, guys. So Arizona, one, two, three spots across Arizona and Southern California right at the border. There we go. One, two, three, and four spots there. And then at Central California, make sure you can see all this. Central California up here, this is smoke also coming from next to Yosemite. Let me take it back to the start of the day for you. So you can see it develop throughout the day. So we got ourselves a new fire problem. First day of fire season started yesterday on the West Coast. And all of a sudden this happens today. So I don't know. That to me says people get out there and do that. Look at the spacing on it. Seems pretty even. Just like up in Canada. That even spacing on the fires to start out. So odd. So odd on that. 
But that's what's taking place now along the south edge of the Craton and the interior portion of the accretionary belt in California. Going up to the north, just really quick, look at that smoke line. Two lines of smoke being brought in all the way to interior into Wyoming. That's coming from Canada. That's massive smoke still coming from the Canadian fires. See that? that those two lines of smoke? Let's look throughout the day today. There you go. You can see it. It's actually going all the way to Minnesota. So we have Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, all of Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and Southwest Canada. Look at that smoke. And then it's coming in now from the Southwest. So they're filling in the open area with smoke across from California down to the south at the California-Mexico border and back up here. The only open area is now being filled in with smoke. That's all upwind from us, guys. We're all across over here, most likely. If you're in the United States, watch it on the West Coast. I don't know if you're right along the coast out here. You might be spared some of that for a little while. But even look at that. Even on with you guys being spared with a flow coming in from the ocean, coming in from the west, you're still so hazy and so smoggy off all the smoke from the Canada fires. I'd also like to quickly go look up uh, up in the northeast and just see what's going on in Quebec. All these black dots are still the fires, but it might be kind of hard to see through all the cloud cover. Oh, no, you can still see it. Look at all that smoke there. Fills in right at the last second there with all that haze on the edge of the Craton. Going across over across central Canada, it's all the same, guys. Look at the amount of smoke right into sunset there. You can really see it. Just a haze, a, a smog. And you can see there are fires breaking off across Manitoba and all the way up to the north, out of view of our satellites even, coming in from far northern territories or whatever those places are called up there in North Canada. And we also, looks like we have a little bit of good old weather modification taking place here. A little bit of cloud seeding going on. Just a little, right? Up here in the northwest, up into BC, look at the smoke there still coming from all the burning oil pumping operations. In case you didn't know, all the areas up in the northwest there, they have about 100,000 different oil pumping operations across BC and Alberta there that just burned all that. And then going up to the north, look at what just happened today on the north side of Alberta. Going, there, like I said, off screen up to the north where we can't even see it. Now we got fires off screen where you can't even see. We might get a global view on it, maybe if we were to go look at a full disk view. I don't know. No, it'll be real hard to see at this level. I don't know, you can see, wow. Okay, wait, well, no, no, you can totally see it. Right up here, going north into the northern part of Canada. Up here on the north side too of BC, up here. That goes up towards Yukon. Just massive, look at that. All this and all that. That's all smoke, but it's so hard to see. Let's go back up in our continental view one more time and just see if we can get a good view on it. Yeah, all this here and all this here is all new smoke being added in with new fires coming from further to the north. That is crazy. Considering the amount of smoke that's already involved here. I mean, it's insane. So add in down in the southwest, add in California, add in three equally distributed spots across Arizona, the only place I haven't looked is down in Mexico to see what's going on down there. Well, at the Mexico-California border, that's huge. Look at that. And then, of course, across Mexico itself, it's kind of hard to see. But they're still got all the fires going down there. I'm taking the time to look this up because nobody else will, first of all. Secondly, it coincides with earthquake activity that we have to pay attention to. We were getting hot spots out here in the ocean. In case you didn't know. So we were getting black dots out here in the ocean. Turns out there's offshore rigs that are out there. Small, tiny Mexican rigs. A few dozen feet wide that are flaring off. Let's recap. Man, we really got sidetracked here. Line of earthquakes coming in from the northwest going down through the volcanoes. Line of earthquakes coming in from the northwest going along the edge of the Craton, going down into Yellowstone. Line of earthquakes pointing across going over into Colorado, down to Texas, over into the east coast. Those lines of earthquakes are waves of energy coming across the plate 
can all trace back to the Northwest. My warning for California expired today. In the Northwest, Northwest California at Eureka expired today. Warning for 6 to 6.5. Biggest you got was a 4. I'm two magnitudes off. That's 100 fold in power off. I consider that an earthquake forecast. Miss on the power. Total miss on the power. The locations got hit smack on, spot on. Multiple fours hit the spot. Still, 100 times less power than I was looking for. Where is it? Still out there. The energy is still out there. Has not struck, has not broken. All of California is starting to increase in the number of earthquakes. The frequency is starting to increase. We're starting to pick up at the volcanoes in the northwest. Looks like I'm running a few days late, but even if the earthquake hits now, I still don't count it as a hit. It's just 6.5 hits off the coast of Eureka in the next day. That's the earthquake we're looking for. It's just taking a day longer than I expected. If it doesn't hit at all, like if we get to the next day, two days, three days, and there's nothing except for those fours, I have to go back and figure out where the energy is. It's like a flood where the water just disappears. Did it go down into a cave system? Is it going to come back up somewhere? Right? Like, you, you don't normally see just water disappear from a flood. So where is it? Well, it's gone pretty quiet out in the ocean. There hasn't been a single earthquake of any significant size reported in the Juan de Fuca in months. No fives, no sixes, no. Right? So where... Where is it? Well, Wanda Fuqua's storing it up like a giant bent-up, pent-up spring. Let's go down into Southern California where we can be a little bit more reliable in our forecasting. When you start to see the number of earthquakes increase down south, you start seeing a bunch of fires just over to your east, up to your north, down to your south. I would watch. I would watch here. I would watch Southern California, San Diego to L.A., right in the middle of all these earthquakes. I'd watch for something going up above anything that's currently on the screen. Currently, we're going up to three. I'd watch for a four. I'd watch for a four down in Southern California. Anything bigger, I'll get back on and tell you. We'll watch for that. But right now, stands to reason, should be four. Fires all around you, a spread of fours going, or I'm sorry, set of upper threes going down to the south and threes going over to the east. In the middle of the mess, there should be something bigger than what's currently all the way around. Oh, man, this update. Okay, well, there it is. There's your update. Down in New Zealand, watching a Wellington, in case you don't know. Up in the Northwest Pacific, we're watching at Japan, and we're watching Afghanistan. We have one more day to go on the watch for both, for Japan and Afghanistan, down to the last day for both of those. Those are in the six range as well. So the sixes we're looking for from Afghanistan to Japan to California off the coast, haven't taken place yet. I'm waiting just like you are. If I'm wrong, I have to get back on and own it. I don't think I'm going to be wrong, guys. Uh, especially with the solar storms coming in. I mean, I should be issuing warnings for bigger earthquake activity, but that we've got to get this current forecast out of the way in the next two days. Then I can reissue a new forecast with the solar incorporated. Solar's going to be arriving in the next day. So X-class flares, like I said, takes two to three days to reach us. Another day of air glow. That's four days. So that's the time it takes to reach us and go down to the planet, down to the core. So I got to get a new forecast out soon. We're going to be taking a huge step up magnitude-wise. I think we're going to be going back up to near 8.0. But that's getting ahead of myself. We've got to let the current forecast expire. Two more days to go on that. Or no, one more day to go on that. 24 hours from now. Do you have an earthquake plan? Do you know what to do when an earthquake strikes? Get this. Knock on wood. I've never felt an earthquake of any kind. Weird, right? The only earthquake to strike St. Louis that was felt across the whole area struck on the day I left to take the radiation readings for the Fukushima disaster when I drove across the country taking radiation readings. Wife and I got in the car, rental car, drove out of Missouri. We crossed the Kansas state line. No, this is not a joke. I was doing radiation readings right across the Kansas state line, one state away, as soon as we crossed the state line. 5.0 earthquake hit St. Louis. <laughs> so weird. 
The only one to ever be felt, right? Like 10 years time or whatever. Last 10 years. And then before that, we didn't live here. The last one that hit. Moved out to Colorado. So I've never felt a quake. But I've seen enough videos to know that when an earthquake strikes, people tend to not take shelter underneath a table or desk. They run to a doorway or they are running around screaming earthquake or something. Well, you don't have to run around and scream earthquake because everybody already knows an earthquake's happening. So take shelter underneath a table or desk. You go out of your structure if you do not feel confident in your structure. So cinder block and brick structures, it is recommended in a cinder block stack structure, stone stack structures, on reinforced masonry structures, to have an exit plan far away from the building or anything else that can fall and hit you or come up from the ground and harm you, whether that's sewer lines, gas lines, water mains, falling things from above like power lines. you got to know your surroundings ahead of time if you're going to try and evacuate. And good luck evacuating. Again, when a big earthquake's happening, you see all these videos, people trying to run during a big earthquake. It's next to impossible. They fall over. People even break their legs and ankles trying to run during an earthquake because apparently it's pretty hard when a big earthquake's happening to run because the ground is shaking. I don't know. I'd probably still be booking it if I was in a brick stacked structure. But if there's beyond a certain height, if you're in a brick or cinder block stack structure and you're a few stories up, you won't be able to exit the building in a minute or two minutes or however long. It'll take you longer than that to get down the staircase normally if it's a multi-story building. So if you're going to be going out of a big building, you might be going outside into a worse situation than if you just stayed inside. Okay, anyway, I know, right? Like, it doesn't help much. You need to know your surroundings and know where to go and know what to do when a quake strikes. That's what's called having an earthquake plan, and it's specific to each location. The broader thing you can do is to have an emergency kit. I always end my broadcast telling everybody this. Need to have an emergency kit. Need to do it. Change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, first aid kit. I'm so tired of saying it. Food and water. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, 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 Dutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm going to go riot at Walmart when it hits the fan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be grabbing the loaf of bread out of the hands of a grandma who's also out there rioting, which would be kind of weird. Why can't you just have a plan, man? I have yet to see a disaster where everybody's got a backpack full of stuff. Anyway. All right. I start getting all bummed out thinking about disasters and people not being prepared. I can only do so much. I can I can tell you I'm probably not nearly as prepared as I should be, and I'm the guy who tells you to be prepared. I need to go through my bug out bag and make sure everything's updated. The batteries are probably getting worn down or dead over a course of a year or two. What else? Start to get a little whiny, old man whiny. You guys be safe. Much love. Be kind to one another when times are going crazy. You know, you might want to have some extra supplies. I'm serious. Have some extra stuff on hand so you can help people, actually. They might try and rob you anyways, but still, maybe they won't shoot you. That's, that's some faith in your fellow man, isn't it? <laughs> Look, kids, I had, a, I had a rough life. All right, 10 I've had a rough life, says the YouTube video maker. Dude, whatever. All right, first world problems, guys. I'm out of here. You guys have a good evening or morning or afternoon or night, wherever you are. I will hopefully be back to do another update at some point in the near-term future. Be safe.